and I never will work 40 hours because I get social security. Welcome to the Rebel Chaser channel. My name is Gail and I've got two clips for you. Um, both of these are stellar mothers. Um, the first one is really quick. Uh, it's a objection to a court order and it apparently is for child support. She doesn't like the fact that she has to pay child support. And uh, the second one is an objection to the referee that uh, handled their case. She actually has a whole bunch of object objections. She's a complete victim. Nothing works for her and it's all everybody else's fault. So um, let me know what you guys think. Are you April Keeler? Yep. All right. Calling case 2015-1835 DC, April Keeler versus Daniel Miller. Today is Monday, August 28, 2023 at 946 AM. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Reed on behalf of the defendant, plaintiff superior in pro per. Plaintiff has filed an objection to order. Uh, Ms. Keeler, uh, you can proceed. Um, I only work part time because I get Social Security and I do home care. So it's up to like if I get a client or not, if I have a client or if I'm picking up shifts right now, I do not have a client. Whenever I can pick up shifts, I pick up shifts, but nothing is guaranteed. And I never will work 40 hours because I get Social Security. Okay. Ms. Reed, what's, uh, what's your response? At the evidentiary hearing, this honorable court imputed the plaintiff at $15 an hour for 40 hours a week as she cut off and left the hearing early. The orders that were submitted under the seven-day rule accurately reflect the court's ruling, and it's our position that the objection is not proper pursuant to MCR 2.602-B. B, and we're requesting that the proposed orders that were submitted under seven day be entered and we're requesting attorney's fees in the amount of $750 as this objection is not proper. Okay. Any response, Ms. Keeler? Um, as far as the rejection, I came down to the courthouse and that's what they directed me to do and fill out. Okay. Well, what happens is they may have directed you, but uh, the court does find that the objection is not proper pursuant to Michigan Court Rule 2.602, parens B, parens 3, parens B. In this uh, particular matter, the court had uh, imputed income at that point. Uh, so what the court is going to do at this point, the court is going to deny the objection, enter the order. If you have some subsequent uh, basis uh, Ms. Keeler, you can always file a motion in that matter. I am going okay. to reserve on the attorney fees uh, should further hearing be necessitated in this matter. Uh, Ms. Reed, I ask that you prepare that order denying the motion and reserving on the attorney fees in this particular matter. The court will enter the order as submitted. That will conclude this matter at 948 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Calling case 2016-1690-DM, Ryan Wilson versus Clara Wilson. Today is Monday, September 25th, 2023 at 10.35 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Vollmering on behalf of the plaintiff, uh, defendants appearing in pro per. This matter is before the court on the defendant's objection to the referee uh, recommended order. Ms. Wilson, you can proceed. Um... My objection obviously has to do with the fact that uh, the evidence that I submitted to the court was not properly scanned in. He had um, referee Croto had no paperwork that I had given to the clerk's office um, in any logical order. I have no idea what did actually end up on his desk and what ended up not being on his desk to be able to correct the situation. Uh, nor am I versed in Zoom to be able to uh, screen share. I told him, I was like, okay, next time we get together um, for a hearing uh, date, I will obviously have perfected those skills 
in order to make sure that he has the proper documentation and I'm able to present that to both uh, the plaintiff and him uh, during proceedings. Um, Ma'am, you understand that in the notices and the, the whole thing on the Zoom, it tells you that you're responsible for those uh, documents and you're responsible for making sure that you are able to screen share those and present those to the court. Um, that I no, that's not that wasn't ever on my screen. Um, that warning was never on my screen. Okay, well, it's your responsibility as a party. It's no different than Mr. Vollmering. If he wanted to present something and he couldn't do it at the hearing, uh, it's nobody's responsibility but his. So in your case, it's your responsibility to make sure that those are able to be shared and presented to the court. Okay. Um yeah, that was not on the screen that I saw at all. Um, and in addition to that, like this documentation was not properly scanned in by the clerk's office anyway. So he had no way of even knowing what I was presenting um, either way. Um, Again, it's your responsibility. So. I, I Okay, so when I hand in the paperwork to the court, for evidence, for submission of evidence. And he does not receive that documentation after it's out of my hands. There's nothing I can do about that particular line of evidence submission. Well, How, there's a lot of I things you can do. You can, as, as, as you already acknowledge, you can do the screen share. You can present it. I don't know if this hearing was in person or not. It was I assume it wasn't. It was via Zoom. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, but it's your, again, it's your responsibility to make sure that those get, uh, get submitted at the time of the hearing. Because what will happen when you submit documents to the clerk's office, it's not unusual to parties submit voluminous documents. And yet they may use a fraction of those documents at the hearing. Just they determine that they're not useful or that they don't want to admit them, et cetera. And so it's your responsibility to make sure that that gets done properly. So go ahead. Um, also, there was the referee in camera interview. Um, do we have access to that interview? An in camera interview is privileged and confidential. We do not have, it is not uh, shared by anyone. It's not to leave that particular room. So the parties, the attorneys, even myself, We'll never find out what occurred at that uh, that interview. And the next issue was the fact that uh, referee Croto has had stated in previous uh, proceedings that he did disliked breaking up testimonies from witnesses. Um, so I did not subpoena uh, two of the witnesses that I was going to have to recall um, due to that fact that he had stated that displeasure in that. Um, in the last day, it was uh, forced closing. The closing statements was demanded, even though the paperwork was not correct. I told him that I would learn how to submit the paperwork um, via uh, Zoom screen and everything. But I, there was no chance at all for me to counter um, an expert witness. I have no idea what he admitted to not ever calling me back, never contacting me. And there was no opportunity for me to rebut his testimony as an expert witness. You called, didn't you uh, call a CPS worker and had that person testify? I had the one person, yes. Okay. So you know how to get somebody to testify then, correct? Um, yeah. And I was not afforded the opportunity to get the evidence I needed for an expert against an expert witness. He there testified. Was a, there, there was a hearing on May 12th and then mm -hmm. again on August 3rd. You could have subpoenaed an expert for either of those particular hearings. And I would have if I knew what the plaintiff's expert witness was going to testify about. You, you, you can't you can't just say, well, geez, they've presented their witnesses, and now I think I need an expert. That's not how trials work, ma'am. You have to have your witnesses present 
and available for testimony. And I understand that. However, the simple fact is the the expert witness that the plaintiff called would not contact me back. And I have no idea what he's going to witness against. So therefore I have no recourse as to this is the expert witness that I would call to counter his testimony. The other party's experts are not required to contact you back. They're not required to have any communication with you. They're the other party's witnesses. They're the other party's expert, and they testify at trial. And you have to prepare your case, just as Mr. Vollmering had to prepare his case, and present the case as best you can. You can't, you know, if you wanted to have, let's say, a... uh, information or you wanted to have forewarning as to what the expert was going to testify, you could have uh, had that expert take a deposition and you could have went through all of that testimony at that time in preparation for your hearing. With the witness who does not get back to anyone including the CPS witness. You subpoena the person and they are required to show up for their deposition. Or if you subpoena them, they're required to show up for the hearing. So obviously so you, you have a disadvantage a little bit because you're representing yourself, but that's the responsibility that you take on when you represent yourself and don't have an attorney. So that's unfortunate. Anything else? Uh, yeah, the wording of... Uh... The wording that the referee put for the attorney fee section, last page, third paragraph, it implies that I'm to pay all attorney fees in that the show cause hearing, which is what the entire custody case is, is the show cause. Um, He didn't specify it was the show cause for contempt of court or if it was the show cause um, for the entire situation. Okay. Mr. Vollmering, what's uh, what's your response? She did not put that in her objection, Your Honor. Okay. Anything else, uh, Mr. Vollmering? Um, I, I would, I guess I'll just add to that. Um, there were two competing show causes. I asked for attorney's fees on both of them um, as a result of uh, frivolous pleadings filed by the defendant here. So it, my interpretation was that it applied to the, both of those um, show causes. Okay. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I just, is this, I'm sorry, is this in response to all of what she was yes. saying? Or that in response part? to everything. Okay. Um, I guess as far as the other items go, um, I think the court pretty well hit on it. And I also will uh, primarily rely on my pleadings there, but it was the defendant's responsibility to subpoena her witnesses um, and to prepare her documents and exhibits for trial. Um, She has shown an ability to do so in the past and just chose to not do so this time. Um, And so I, I, again, I'd just like to reiterate, I'd like uh, attorney's fees um, for having to appear for this uh, motion as well. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Ms. Wilson? Apparently not. Okay. Well, in this case, the court did have opportunity to review the uh, ruling of the uh, referee. Uh, He did make uh, a very thorough factual and legal decision in this uh, particular matter. He did address and found issues of credibility uh, to be uh, substantial in this matter, as well as finding that the established custodial environment was with the uh, plaintiff in this case. And as a result, the court, after I reviewed that and thoroughly reviewed it, the court could not determine that the referee made either a factual or legal error in this matter. So the court is going to deny the objection in this matter, and uh, that will conclude the case. And uh, I do have something that's slightly off topic that has to do with paperwork and filing in your guys's office. If you wanted to hear about it, well, if it doesn't go to the objection, I don't care to hear about it because it's not before the court today. So, 
the fact I have somebody else's information from their court date and their rulings and their custody case in my envelope sent to my home isn't concerning. Well, that uh, obviously it's always of a concern, uh, but it doesn't affect these particular proceedings. And what you need to do is you'll need to file a complaint with the front of the court because they were been the ones that sent that out to you. So you can file a, uh, a complaint with them. Okay. okay. Court will end this matter at 1046 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Hey, Your Honor, uh, real quick, uh, on my attorney's fees, was that denied? I, I'm denying that at this point, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.